I'm Francisco Brasileiro from Federal University of Campina Grande, and I'm presenting this uh, middle F uh, called Fogbo and the, on behalf of the EU Brazil CC Consortium. is a, a project that is funded by both uh, the European Commission and the Brazilian government. Uh, the project is coordinated by UFCG at the Brazilian side and by the uh, Polytechnic of Valencia uh, at the European side by Inácio Blanca. So the, the motivation for, for the middleware is uh, for the federation of these uh, private clouds is that some of the applications that we uh, are supporting and in fact many scientific applications have this uh, bursty uh, characteristics where you uh, you need uh, a lot of, uh, a large number of resources for a very uh, short period of time. So cloud bursting is uh, a way to deal with this problem. So you don't need to over provision your your local infrastructure and just use. Uh, extra resources uh, that you get elsewhere when, when you need them. Uh, the problem with doing that in public clouds is that when you have uh, a demand that's too high, uh, most pu public providers won't allow you to use that many resources for a short period of time. So uh, you have to go through offline negotiations to uh, convince them that the, you will be able to uh, that you have a case for using uh, so many resources. Uh, the, the other problem is sometimes you have some privacy res uh, restrictions that uh, does not allow you to go to the public cloud. For instance, one of our applications is the coupling of two uh, simulators, one that, this, that simulates the heart uh, uh, and another that simulates the vascular system. And uh, one of the use cases of this uh, uh, coupling is to use real data uh, from uh, patients to, to do what-if uh, analysis. And this is uh, data that have some uh, restrictions. Uh, in the case of uh, high demand, another application that we have in, in the project is one that uh, tries to understand uh, how much climate change and human uh, interaction with the environment have uh, uh, how much of these two things uh, are responsible for the changes in particular uh, regions of the globe. Uh, in particular, we are looking uh, at the semi-arid region in Brazil, which is a, a region with uh, uh, one million square kilometers. And we want to, to look 30 years in the past. So we have uh, remote sensing data for 30 years. Every 16 days, we, we have a, uh, uh, a picture of a particular part of this region. And uh, the, the whole region re uh, needs like uh, 56 of these scenes. So the number of data that we need to, to process is quite large. Uh, so one alternative is to, to federate private clouds because uh, you might not have, uh, you might solve your privacy restrictions and uh, you might be able to, to get access to large amounts of resources uh, than you would in a public cloud. Well, the main challenge that we want to, to address uh, with this development is to, to do this uh, federation uh, preserving as much as possible the autonomy of each individual private cloud. There has, uh, this has implications on authentication and authorization, on uh, cross-site requests, how you uh, deal with the differences in flavors in different uh, uh, private clouds, uh, remote connectivity, uh, usually your private cloud is not open to, to outside, how you do that uh, being economical on the number of IP, uh, public IPs that you provide, and of course interoperability because uh, you might have people with different uh, cloud uh, middleware on, on their private cloud.
So our, our proposition is to do uh, the federation with minimal uh, hassle at each uh, cloud provider. So there is no need for a specific cloud middleware. Uh, the only thing we require is that uh, federation component is, is deployed at each uh, uh, private cloud. And uh, the private cloud owner will create uh, a user that will proxy the federation requests uh, to the other clouds and, and to the local cloud. And the, uh, the, poli the use policy for this uh, user is completely defined by the, the local private, each, each uh, the local uh, private cloud admin. Each cloud, uh, private cloud might have a different uh, policy uh, in place. Uh, so the, the, the architecture is uh, the following. Uh, there is this uh, Fogbo manager that sits on top of each uh, private cloud, expose uh, an OCCI uh, interface. Uh, there is a local, uh, logically centralized rendezvous service that allows the private clouds to, to find each other. And the communication between Fogbo managers and, and the rendezvous service is done through XMPP to uh, f be uh, internet friendly, so it's uh, easy to set up of the firewall, etc. Uh, at each uh, private cloud, you have this uh, federation manager that uh, uh, uses uh, a plugin layer to, al to allow the adaptation uh, with the, the underlying uh, cloud. So one, one thing that uh, we, need, we needed to uh, add uh, in order to, to better serve our clients uh, was the uh, possibility of having uh, asynchronous instantiation of, of VM. When you want to instantiate thousands of VMs, you do not you don't, not want to do that in a synchronous way, one VM at a time. You want to send uh, requests. Uh, because, uh, in fact, you don't know if you will be able to ever instantiate the, the amount of VMs that you, you will need. So usually you, you want as many as possible and you deal with the, with the new VMs that are uh, uh, instantiated as, as you go. Of course, you, you need to design for failures in this case because the number of VMs you are dealing with is, is quite large. So uh, the way we implemented that was uh, creating a new category, let's name a request. And uh, the request has the, the following attributes, as a type, it can be one time or persistent, has a, a time uh, validity uh, attributes, the number of instances that you want to create, uh, there is a, a, a request state attribute that's used by the, the, the server to understand uh, what's going on with the, the request. And when uh, uh, an instance is eventually created and associated to that request, you need to get uh, to, to have the ID for that uh, instance. So just a little more details about the life cycle of a, a one-time request. So the, the, when you issue the request that goes to an open state. When uh, an instance is associated to that uh, request, it goes to the fulfilled state. Uh, then when the, the instance is lost, either because uh, there is a failure or the, the provider has uh, uh, preempted the resource or uh, the client has returned the, the, the resource, the request goes, goes to the closed state. And then uh, it can be deleted and from the uh, closed, uh, it goes to the deleted without an instance, and eventually it disappears. If the request is deleted while an instance is still uh, active, the request goes to uh, a state deleted with the instance, and then when the instance is lost, it goes to the deleted without the instance, and then to the uh, and then it uh, disappears. The difference from uh, the one time to the persistent is that when uh, the instance is lost, the request goes automatically to the open 
uh, state again. So you keep receiving new instances. Uh, so this is uh, heavily influenced by the way uh, Amazon uh, Web Service uh, manage their spot uh, instance. So it's the same kind of uh, uh, conce uh, concept. Uh, in addition to this uh, new kind of resource, we, we created uh, a new category called the flavor, uh, which is a mapping between the flavor of the, the federation uh, to the flavor of the, the instance types that can be created in, in the local cloud. A uh, new implementation for the query interface so that uh, we can list these new kinds of uh, resources. Uh, a new implementation for, uh, of compute to support some management operations on remote uh, compute instances, so the, the, the compute instances that are created in the remote cloud. So we can only get the information or delete uh, uh, the, the instances that were created there. And everything else is bypassed to the... So we are assuming that the underlying cloud is providing uh, an OCCI API so that all the other uh, features that uh, we are not uh, implemented will be uh, dealt with by the underlying cloud. Uh, regarding uh, remote connections, we, we developed a, a tunnel service that provides uh, so that you need only to expose one uh, public IP for the whole uh, private cloud and, and, and tunnels are automatically uh, built to connect the, the client to the VMs that are instantiated uh, remotely. Uh, currently, we have plugins for uh, OpenStack and Open Nebula. We have also, uh, in, in addition to the um, OpenStack and Open Nebula standard, uh, identity uh, providers, we have plugins for VOMS and X, uh, X509. So I'll move to the demo. Okay, so, uh, oh, hang on. Uh, before moving to the demo, let me just uh, sketch what we are going to. So the idea is to use the uh, Federated Cloud in production in the EU Brazil CC project. So we have four uh, private clouds that are being federated uh, currently. Two of them are at UFCGs. Uh, they, they run OpenStack. One of them is a, a standard uh, cloud uh, deployment with the servers. The other one is uh, an opportunistic cloud that uses uh, desktops as computing nodes when, when they are idle. It also uses OpenStack. Uh, we have a, a, a private cloud at LNCC, which is one of the partners in Brazil of the project in, in Petropolis. And uh, another cloud in, uh, at UPV uh, that runs uh, OpenNebula. Other partners in the project are at this moment deploying uh, the Fogbo manager at their uh, installations to, to increase the, the federation. So we, we de deployed the Fogbo manage on each of these. Uh, there is a, a rendezvous service that uh, joined these uh, uh, managers together, uh, and they communicate through this uh, XMPP uh, network. Uh, there is a, a dashboard that's used as an uh, interface for demonstration purpose. Uh, don't believe that people that are instantiating thousands of VMs will use a an interactive uh, uh, interface, uh, and this is what I'm going to, to show. So, uh, this is uh, the dashboard of Fogbo. It uses uh, the Horizon uh, code. Uh, you can choose uh, the different plugins that uh, uh, you, you can use. Uh, now, uh, in this version, we, we had three ways of, uh, of uh, uh, providing identity. Uh, this one uses uh, a token that is uh, acquired 
off band. Uh, this one uses uh, Open Ebola, so we don't need to to say what's the, the name of the project. But the one, uh, the cloud at uh, UFCG is configured to use uh, our local uh, Keystone uh, servers. So I'm going to log in with the the Fogball. I, I could log in with my. I could log in with my ID, but I'm going to use uh, the the Fogball the Fogball uh, user, which is that special user that was created to to proxy the the uh, request. So, in this case, the the authentication was done locally. Uh, this is a, an overview of the request, so there are no requests in in the system. Here you can see uh, the members in the federation. So we have the four uh, cloud providers. Uh, here is the quota that was defined by each provider for the, for the federation. So I can instantiate 10 uh, small machines at the desktop uh, cloud, 10 at the uh, LNCC cloud, 10 at the UPV cloud, and 30 at the server uh, cloud at, at WebCG. So we can come here and request and, and create requests. So I'm going to create 60 requests so that I can use the whole uh, quota that was uh, provided. So the requests are created, they, they go initially to the open uh, state, and here we can have a more... Uh, so they are still open, they will move uh, as, as the VMs are created, they will move to the fulfilled uh, state. You can see that four of them have already been, but probably more than that. The, the information, this uh, members information comes from the rendezvous service, while the overview information comes from the local uh, Fogwell manager, so that, that they uh, not necessarily will match. Uh, they will eventually get consistent, but uh, they might get inconsistent from time to time. Let me see if I can see the... So some of the uh, requests have uh, already been fulfilled, some are still open. And then you have the instance ID here with the information on, on the instance that were created. So this uh, instance was created in our uh, server uh, uh, cloud. And then I, could, I can use this, uh, this IP this public IP and this uh, port to uh, access the, the VM. I'm going to use uh, a user that's uh, registering this uh, VM. So I'm, I'm logged in in the the VM that was created in our cloud. Uh, let me see how this is evolving. So I have 38 of the 60. The, the, the 30 first requests were uh, quickly created because they were created in our uh, uh, private cloud. Then 
uh, you each uh, we go round robin in each of the the the, the remote clouds to to get uh, the other clouds. So let me show you. Uh, So this is uh, this was created in a in a different cloud. You can see by the the IP address. And this was also in a in a different cloud. Uh, I. Th I think that was all of what I had to show. Uh, okay, thank you.